everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about what is melasma, what are its causes and how to treat melasma. So melasma is a chronic skin condition. It is characterized by the appearance of dark discolored patches on the skin. It is primarily on the face. It is often referred to as the mask of pregnancy because it is very prominent or prevalent in the pregnant woman. Melasma is a pigmentation disorder that leads to development of brown and gray brown patches on the skin. The patches are usually flat and vary in size and shape. Melasma most commonly appear on the sun exposure area of the face, including the forehead, the nose bridge, or else the cheeks, the chin, and usually it is more common on the face as compared to the body. So what can be the causes of melasma? So the first cause that has been observed is the hormonal changes. Usually when woman is pregnant and she is about to give birth, her body hormones like estrogen and progesterone are actually going haywire. And due to this reason, this triggers the melanocytes, the skin cells that is present on the upper layer of our skin. So these melanocytes produce melanin. Sometimes when the hormonal changes are imbalanced, so these melanocytes get triggered and they start to produce a lot of pigmentation. The next reason is the sunlight or the sun exposure. The main culprit of melasma triggering the melasma onto the skin is the UV exposure. There are different types of UV rays like UVA, UVB and UVC. So the UVA penetrates deeper into the skin, it can even touch the dermis whereas UEB sits on the stratum corneum and it reflects back in some cases whereas UEC doesn't even penetrate into the skin. So the UVA is the culprit that triggers the melanocytes and to have a proper protection against the sun is a must. There are so many cases where the woman getting pregnant and walking in the sun without any protection can lead to development of the melasma. Then there is the genetics that come into the play. Now genetics is like something that you cannot get rid of and in 50% of the studies in the research they have shown that the woman whole family history had the melasma like all the women in their family so the woman in the present also has melasma like her mother had melasma in the past and her, her mother's mother like her grandmother had melasma and her great grandmother had melasma so it's the genes that keeps carrying on and also is progressed to the future generation so genetics also is a main cause of the melasma and 50 percent of population show this that the genetics has played a role and the melasma has appeared onto the skin this also depends the next fourth cause is about the skin types usually the darker skin tones like the latin american or else the afro-american or indian asian women are showing more you know melasma bone skin as compared to the caucasian skin it is just because the darker skin tones have high number of melanocytes and they produce larger amount of melanin that gives a deeper complexion to the skin so due to this reason the melanocytes can get triggered easily because there is large number of melanocytes in the dark skin types if you compare to the caucasian and skin of color skin of color are more fragile as compared to the caucasian skin types it is just because of the high number of melanocytes present in our skin if you trigger your skin this can lead to progression of the pigmentation and in the worst case scenario melasma the next cause can be the other triggers and the the other triggers means like not using your skincare right and using the caucasian skincare on skin of color this is one of the reasons. This happens when you don't understand the skincare formulation and you apply something that is not just right for your skin. Especially if you're pregnant, you need to be very careful about what you are applying to the skin and none of the ingredients should trigger your melanocytes, especially if you're deeper skin tone. There are some, you know, drugs prescribed by doctors, antibiotics, some sun, they also cause sensitivity to the sun exposure and can lead to progression of melasma. As coming back to the before point that is about not using the proper skincare ingredients, this can be very alarming 
as the skin of color using wrong ingredients onto their skin and then progression of the pigmentation is very visible. The main culprit in skin of color is higher concentration of glycolic acid, higher concentration of AHAs like lactic acid, glycolic acid, but mandelic acid which falls into the AHA category is much better as compared to the lactic or glycolic acids. So lactic glycolic acids are quite powerful and their molecular size are a bit smaller as compared to mandelic acid they trigger the melanocytes the diagnosis of melasma is very uh, easy because doctors now have like progressed science so there's a lot of research so the first thing that they do is like visually examine your skin and the second thing is the woods lamp they try to see the depth of your pigmentation and need to know what treatments can be excellent for your uh, curing of melasma onto the skin. Now to the next part of the video that is treatment of melasma. The first comes the sun protection. As I mentioned that sun can be the major reason of causing melasma onto the skin so it is very necessary to use if you're pregnant mineral sunscreen which has UVA and UVB protection and it should be SPF 50 and 4 pluses. It should be like a proper protection especially if you are deeper skin tones you live near the warmer areas and this can be the reason because the uv rays protection if you don't do it properly this leads to melasma or pigmentation so uva radiation is the major culprit as compared to uvb uva penetrates deep and even you need to have sun protection when you are sitting inside the house there are some studies which say that even the uva can penetrate from the windows and reach to your skin and penetrate deeper so you need to even have sun protection in the house with large windows which has constant sun exposure and not taking proper care against sun can trigger the melanocytes and it has been observed in a lot of studies that melanocytes get triggered easily the main culprit is the sun and protection against uv radiation is a must then there are different topical treatments now topical treatments are the creams the serums and different concentrations of serums or ingredients that can help to bring back that healthy skin so the first treatment is the hydroquinone then there is kojic acid azelic acid and even there is tranexamic acid now tranexamic acid is quite widely studied and it has been shown to have much better results there are like different concentration of tranexamic acid present on the shelf but the injections and oral supplementation of tranexamic acid shows much better result as compared to tranexamic acid topical application but there is also tretinoin prescribed for the people who have melasma but tretinoin also has its own drawback as it can lead to more dryness of the skin and that can be quite alarming for the melasma skin type because the external stressors can penetrate and also trigger the melanocytes but the most safest treatment is the supplementation of tranexamic acid or else the injection of tranexamic acid with the woods lamp the doctors understand what is the depth and accordingly they give the topical treatments or else the oral supplementation necessary for treating the melasma then there are professional treatments which can be done in the presence of doctors or the professionals or esthetician and the skin related person who can treat your skin better the first one is the chemical peel in chemical peel a lot of different types of peels are used according to the skin tones and different concentrations of the chemicals and it helps to peel the top layer of the skin the dead skin the unnecessary skin that has more you know pigmentation so this kind of lightens the pigmentation as new skin cells are coming to the top layer so you need to be careful that what chemical has been used onto the skin if you have deeper skin tones so the proper chemicals should be used and also you should take care of after procedure getting a chemical peel once you are peeling the skin you need not to you know fidget with it not use your you know nails because it can transmit the bacteria and cause inflammation so there is a lot of aftercare after chemical peels but it does show results and it does lighten the pigmentation mark onto the skin the next treatment is the laser therapy now laser therapy there are q-switch lasers and even co2 lasers so these all lasers do show the really good do show good results but they are very 
expensive and also they have their own healing time usually once you get a laser therapy it takes one month to heal your skin because it works according to the skin cycle that is 28 days of shedding and bringing new skin cells so if you get a laser therapy that is co2 laser it is quite powerful and it you know make punctures into the skin deeper depths and it brings you know collagen and fibroblast it gets new skin cells but the healing time is so painful your face gets swollen and even in the processes that you can see that your face is red and it can even you know get triggered it's very inflamed so it has its own drawbacks but the results are quite you know to the point you can see that the melasma has reduced to good 90 percent but it is the co2 lasers therapy but you just can't do laser therapy just because you can there are different ways of doing it like doctors first see giving you topical treatment and see if it is reducing the melasma if it is reducing you don't need to switch to laser therapy if the doctor sees that giving topical medication is not working onto the skin then they suggest for lasers and different lasers have been used onto the skin according to the skin types then there is microdermabrasion now this is a thing that you know removes the top layer of the skin and then lightens the pigmentation onto this uh, on on the the skin this these all are the different therapies that are available in the market but you need to understand that you need to always keep checking up with your dermatologist if you have you know melasma and you see that your pigmentation is going deeper and it's getting darker it's getting wider you need to keep checking your doctor you need to have these procedures done and you need to be very punctual to your doctors then you need to work on the lifestyle modifications you need not to apply any triggering ingredients skincare ingredients or any new skincare that you saw on the market and you wanted to try and you come and try it on the melasma skin that is just crazy because it's gonna trigger your melanocytes so you need to be very careful with what you're selecting to apply onto your skin you need not to have any activity ingredients into it because you never know how sensitive your melanocytes are and how can it get triggered so it's very essential to understand any formulation before applying it to the skin and you need to understand like what concentration works for the best so you need to do a patch test before you even apply it onto the skin this is essential if you don't do patch test and directly apply you're gonna face a lot of pigmentation in conclusion i could say that melasma is such a skin condition which cannot be you know transmitted to other person it doesn't it's not contagious it doesn't spread from one person to another but it has like you know mental drawbacks like if you have melasma your self esteem and your confidence just drops and you want to get rid of it and you have so many different medications so many you know laser therapies and treatments that are out there in the market that can help you get back that healthy skin but you need to always protect your skin from uv light and it is a must because if you don't protect your skin from uv light that is going to cause a big problem as uv light is the main culprit of melasma in the pregnant woman and you need to also make sure that you keep checking your dermatologist you need to have a proper sessions and you need not to skip any sessions because it takes some time to you know heal like melasma I don't know how to say it but there is no cure for melasma there is no permanent cure for melasma it is the gene that sometimes get triggered in some women and sometimes improper care of your skin can also lead to melasma it is something that you need to be patient with your doctors you need to always constantly visit them get to know what works the best for your skin and not you know going and trying out all the skincares out there just because it works you need to understand that there should be a professional a proper doctor with good ratings you need to go to such doctors rather than wasting your time in cheaper treatments alternatives with unprofessionals so this is like something that you need to keep in mind and we need to be very cautious because the skin is the biggest organ on our body if we don't take care of it we might lose our confidence by getting a lot of pigmentation especially if if you are skin of color so i hope i covered all the points if you have any questions you can write down in the comment section below or else reach out to me on my instagram handle thank you very much for watching again guys make sure that you subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends so that they can understand what is melasma what are its causes and how to treat it so thank you very much for watching again i will see you soon in another video take care and bye